Hiromo Arakawa's Full Metal Alchemist is filled to the brim with secrets and mysteries. In this world of alchemy where the law of equivalent exchange seemingly governs everything, darker forces lurk behind the scenes. And although several stories across the globe have toyed with the concept of a corrupt politician or a corrupt military, few have done it the way Full Metal Alchemist has. King Bradley is the very ruler of Amestris, and although the man is hard to read at first, we eventually learn that calling him a corrupt military man undermines the sheer extent of his cruelty. As one of the primary antagonists of the show, King Bradley, or the Führer, is dedicated to the goal of his father, who wants to become someone greater than God. Bradley runs the country as a puppeteer while being a puppet to father himself. He has been the driving force behind the genocides and mass slaughters, most notably the Ishvalon War. And although this has earned him many enemies, Führer Bradley is way too powerful to feel threatened by anyone else. Created to be the homunculus known as Wrath for the very purpose of helping father in his plans, Bradley is one of the most dangerous characters in the show. But what is it that makes him so powerful? How did he become the man he is, and how does he serve father? We answer these questions in today's video. There's more to a mistress than what meets the eye. The human personification of Wrath disguised as the protector of a country. The story of Full Metal Alchemist kicks off with Edward Elric becoming a state alchemist in a mistress. He also wishes to return his brother Alphonse to his body. He needs the Philosopher's Stone to do this, and acquiring a higher rank within the Amestrian military seems to be the easiest way to achieve this feat. However, the pilot episode of the show makes us encounter a former state alchemist who seems to have gone rogue. With Edward and Alphonse opposing him, the alchemist named Isaac tries to destroy Central, which is the capital city of Amestris. New to the game, the Elric brothers know little about the country's military and cannot seem to comprehend the reasons behind Isaac betraying the establishment. However, he lets the boys know one thing, and that is the fact that they are now not Nothing but dogs of the military. Dogs that haven't the slightest idea about what and who it is they are serving. During the same encounter, Isaac is found by the Fyodor King Bradley, as the two come across each other in a dingy alley. While the Fyodor looks fierce, ready to take the perpetrator down, Isaac shows off his exaggerated expressions in front of the man who seems to be heavily connected to the very thing Isaac opposes. The ensuing battle is not a battle at all, as Bradley takes the man down with his sword. In true anime fashion, we we don't even get to see Bradley use his sword, which is a trick often used to betray exemplary swordsmanship that sports movements incomprehensible to the human eye. After the chaos dies down, the Elric brothers come across the Führer, who sheds off his intimidating persona and displays a warmer demeanor towards the brothers. In fact, throughout the earlier scenes with the Führer, he is shown to be a decent person beneath his authoritative exterior. We also get to see the continued teases of this swordsmanship without actually getting to witness the man in action. In terms of appearance, Fyodor Bradley is in great shape for his age, boasts a head full of black hair with a thick mustache, and tops off his look with an eye patch over his left eye. He rules over his country with an iron fist but maintains an amicable impression among the general public. He also happens to be quite the family man with a wife, a son, and a comfortable mansion. But of course, this is all a farce. Fyodor Bradley is originally the homunculus known as Wrath. With a philosopher's stone at his core, he is also the embodiment of father's deadly sin of wrath, and yet is far from being an outlandishly violent man. Instead, Wrath's cruelty is more covert. He is cold and controlled on the outside while being merciless on the inside. He is more than willing to take human lives for father's cause and bears no remorse for the bloodshed he partakes in. This might have been contradicted by a particular scene during the funeral of Maze Hughes, where Fyodor Bradley's palms were visibly shaking. At first glance, it seemed to let the viewer know that despite coming off as an aloof and authoritative figure, the Führer of Amestris cared about his men. However, it was later revealed that Wrath was fuming with rage during the funeral because Hughes's daughter was crying. The homunculus deemed the child's emotional expression at her father's death to be a nuisance, and the resulting anger led to his very palms quivering. A new devil visits the devil's nest. The victory of wrath over greed. Somewhere down the line, Alphonse gets abducted by the homunculus known as Greed. He is taken to Greed's lair down in the sewers. This lair, known as the Devil's Nest, is tracked down by Fyodor Bradley, who destroys Greed in battle. Around this time, both Greed and the viewers get to see beneath Bradley's eye patch. The hidden eye reveals itself to be the Ouroboros tattoo of the homunculi, which is surprising to Greed, but it takes no genius to guess that something has always been off about the guy. Meanwhile, Greed's chimeras chime in to support him, with one of them taking shelter inside Alphonse. Not only does Bradley kill Greed several times, 
combat too with ease, but he also wastes no time in taking down the Chimeras. Finally, the Chimera inside Alphonse's armor takes control over him and attacks Bradley, only for Bradley to shove his sword inside Al's armor, killing the girl inside. Because Greed is a homunculus whose Philosopher's Stone still adds the lifelines of several souls to him, he does not die despite being killed several times. He is subsequently taken back to Father by Wrath, where Greed is liquefied and turned into a Philosopher's Stone once again. While this takes place in front of the Elric brothers, they also get to learn about Fyodor Bradley being a homunculus. The Rise of Wrath How an Orphan Became the Great Fjordr Dedicated to a Twisted Cause An ongoing theme of Full Metal Alchemist is centered around the fact that the country of Amestris was created by Father for the sole purpose of helping him gain powers beyond that of God. When he was the dwarf in the flask, he taught Van Hohenheim the intricacies of alchemy, tricked the King of Xerxes and his men into creating a nationwide transmutation circle, and sacrificed the country's population to gain his powers and longevity, thus birthing the Philosopher's Stone. Stone. Following this, Father relocated to the west from Xerxes, creating a mistress from scratch and, by extension, its dummy government and military. He also began to create the homunculi using Philosopher's Stones and his vices, purifying himself from the seven deadly sins. He needed to repeat the tragedy at Xerxes to realize his goal of becoming a god. For this, he once again needed a nationwide transmutation circle and orchestrated mass slaughter at key points of the circle. To execute this to the fullest, he needed the man running a mistress to be devoted devoted to him, bringing us to Wrath. Despite being a homunculus created specifically by Father, Wrath was different from the others. Sixty years before the events of Full Metal Alchemist, he used to be a regular human. However, he was an orphan without a name or relatives, which led to him being picked for a military program alongside other kids like him. These kids were trained to one day become the puppet king of Amestris. During this time, they acquired skills such as swordsmanship, military tactics, and political strategizing. When they came of age, a philosopher's stone brimming with wrathful souls was fused into them. Eleven candidates underwent the process before Bradley, but they were quick to succumb to their deaths due to not being able to handle the stone. However, the twelfth time was the charm, as Father had his new homunculus with King Bradley. Following the transformation, Wrath was enrolled into the army where he quickly rose through the ranks and became the Führer of Amestris, as intended by Father. He seemingly also radiated a singular chi, unlike the other homunculi who had the chi from the life forces of several people. This meant that Bradley Bradley's wrathful soul could have overwritten the souls from his Philosopher's Stone. Despite his meaningless nature as someone who was created to fulfill another's purpose, Wrath claimed to take pride in picking Mrs. Bradley for the position of his wife. Regardless of his enhanced skill set, Wrath did not possess the regeneration ability of his siblings as he was a human-based homunculus with a human soul fused with a Philosopher's Stone. This was also why he looked like an aged man, although he aged way slower than the average person. But it didn't matter if he didn't have the limitless healing simply because he didn't need it. Being the third strongest homunculus after Father and Pride, Wrath was nigh untouchable in battle. His undeniably invincible swordsmanship allowed him to skillfully wield three to five swords together, if the situation called for it. His physical stats were also greatly enhanced. At the same time, he possessed the ultimate eye, that is, the left eye which he kept hidden under his patch. This eye allowed him to see movements with flawless accuracy. He could pick up motions that the average eye would never notice and predict the outcome outcome of said situation. He could also pinpoint people's weak points and understand what they were aiming at. He was quick enough to outrun Roy Mustang's explosions and was one of the very few characters who could defeat the Flame Alchemist. His intellect made him even more dangerous as Wrath once took down a Briggs tank with nothing but a hand grenade and a sword. In a later conversation with Colonel Roy Mustang following his identity reveal, Wrath mentioned how he did not know whether he had retained his original soul. Mustang did try to leak the truth about the Führer's identity to the military high command. However, he soon learned that they already knew everything about the Führer's nature, as well as Father's plan. This led to Bradley holding Mustang at Central Command to stop him from intervening in their plans. To keep him under his thumb, he reassigned his loyal crew to different positions and made his most trusted underling, Riza Hawkeye, his own personal assistant. With Riza following the Führer's orders, Mustang was left with no choice but to comply with him for Riza's safety because defying Bradley would put his queen in danger. 
The Fall of Wrath, how the Führer of Amestris was quite literally scarred to death. As the story neared its climax and the secrets of Amestris were revealed, the alchemists had no choice but to bring Father's Madness to an end. This meant that they had to take down Führer Bradley first. Although this was not an easy feat, Armstrong's subordinate, Captain Buccaneer, did manage to disarm Wrath. This led to the homunculus using his daggers in battle. Eventually, he found himself standing against Greed. Despite not having his sword, Wrath managed to gain the upper hand and was able to fend off attacks conducted by Ling's bodyguard, Fu, as well. Ultimately, Fu was killed by the homunculus, but on a positive note, Buccaneer managed to impale him with his own saber. And before Wrath could recover, Greed took out his ultimate eye. While Buccaneer died in the process as well, an injured Wrath swam underwater and continued to survive. But not for long. In his final battle, Wrath went against the Ishvalon survivor, Scar. Because Scar's people were brought to their destruction due to the plans of Father and the homunculi, he aided the Elric brothers in battle. Although Scar was quite strong himself, he was driven to a corner by the injured Wrath. Fortunately, Scar was able to destroy both of Wrath's arms following a bloody battle. Now incapacitated completely, Wrath had finally lost, but Scar did go on to admit that this would not have been possible if Wrath was not injured already. He then stabbed Bradley in the mouth with his saber before collapsing. Soon, LaFan arrived at the scene and asked Wrath if he felt remorse for his sad and fabricated life, only for Wrath to experience none of that. However, he did mention that he was grateful to his human foes for keeping his already predicted life unpredictable and interesting. As Wrath bled to death, his black hair turned gray and his body wrinkled to reveal his real age. It is possible that with his death, his Philosopher's Stone was gone, leaving behind the human that Wrath was once upon a time. Marvelous Verdict Like Lust, who died at the hands of a man who understood the vice that represented her too well, with Mustang lusting over the position of Führer, Wrath too succumbed to the vice he stood for. Because he was greatly responsible for the Ishvalon genocide, Scar wished to get revenge against the perpetrators, earning King Bradley his wrath. In the end, Bradley was killed as a result of Scar's wrath towards him. With that, today's video comes to an end. What did you think of Wrath? Did you enjoy this video? If so, don't forget to like and comment down below. Until then, thanks for watching, stay safe out there, and have a marvelous day.